Hello there everyone, it's me KSL of KSL Tech Studios and I'm back with another video after what seems to be an eternity but here I am, I'm back and we're going to be doing another how to slash build along type video uh, today we are going to be upgrading the hard drive in my third generation Apple time capsule with this 4 terabyte HGST Deskstar NAS 7200 RPM. Um, this is only one terabyte, so I really don't have much space on here to complete all of my backups. So I thought might as well upgrade it with a newer drive, one that's going to be a little bit faster, more space, probably enough space to last me forever than with just a nice reliable HGST hard drive. So what I've looked at on these iFixit guides here, in order to be able to complete this repair, I'm going to need something such as a hair dryer to be able to um, heat up the adhesive that is keeping this rubber bottom on the bottom of the time capsule. And you're also just going to need your basic screwdriver set. And I found this really wide tipped screwdriver to use as a prying tool. So I'm going to move this aside for now because we're not going to get into that until we have this fully taken apart. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to move this over, have it on a little cleaning cloth. I'm just going to see if I can at least get some of it up. Yeah, it's a little bit tight on the adhesive. The adhesive does need to be melted, I think. There's nowhere here where it's really loose enough that I feel like it will come off easily. Yeah, that just does not seem like it's going to budge. So I think I'm going to plug in my hair dryer and we're going to get started on melting the adhesive. Okay, so my hair dryer here is plugged in. Now this is a fairly high power hair dryer. So I think I'm going to start it on low and see if that does anything. And what they say is you have to keep your dryer moving so that way you're not going to actually overheat the components inside. So I'm going to start and do that.
Well, that was a total pain in the ass. However, I managed to get everything all off. And it didn't rip into multiple pieces, though there were a few rips here, but that's okay, because once we reapply it, they'll all stick together nice and good, and we'll barely be able to see them. So, that's the bottom rubber removed. Um, okay, so now we have to move on to this plate. This plate is held on with some screws, so in order to get at those screws... Oh, it's turning up dark already. In order to get at these screws here, we're going to need a Phillips head screwdriver, simply. I'd say this size is okay, I'm not really sure. It's 2.5 millimeter. Yeah, that's fine. So now we're going to take off this cover. We have to be very gentle with it because there's a cord that keeps fan attached. Oh, there is a fan. Okay, there it is. I found it. There's that little fan. That's cool. Okay. All I'm going to do, I'm just going to move this. Try not to be too errant with it. Okay, so there's this, and there's the fan. I don't know if you guys can see that, but I don't really have much room on my, on my desk here to do this all. I'm trying to not flex this cable too much, but I was expecting the inside to be dustier based on how dusty the um, time capsule itself is, was. So now you're going to try and remove the temp sensor, which is right under this little thermal, this little foam piece. Try to be gentle as possible to remove this little foam piece here. And then there's a holder. Let me first, okay, there's that. And there's the holder. Okay, that's the holder. And then underneath the holder is the thermal diode itself. And how does this fit in here? No, I don't think it fits in there. I think it just... Okay, so that's out. So I think it's time to get to our brand new spiffy hard drive. So I'm just going to use my screwdriver to get into it. Nice and sharp. out. So here it is. In. Oh, it even came with screws. That's so cool. But I don't think we are going to be needing them this time around. And it's an ESD compliant packaging. So these two are the little things here. Is there anything else good in here? Nope. Yet more screws. And user's manuals. Apologize for that, that's my home phone ringing, but that is okay. So, and this is the hard drive itself, which is in this foil, which we're going to set to the side. So now you're going to disconnect your current hard drive, which hopefully should not be horribly difficult. Oh, you can simply pivot it outwards, I think first. 
Oh, it's kind of just a friction fit in here. It's not really held on by anything, which I think is interesting. And then you have tons of room to simply unplug the old hard drive. So, what hard drive do we have here? This is a Apple, one terabyte, Samsung. I'm trying to find how fast it is, how many RPMs. But it doesn't say anything. Maybe I'm just not looking at it properly. Yeah, it doesn't say how fast it is. I'm going to hazard a guess that it is 7200, but it could also be 5400. There are some foam shocks on the side, but I don't think those are necessary for this installation. So first thing, you just got to rip into the bag of your new hard drive. Here it is. go. HGST, Dust Star Nass. It's fairly cold right now, but that's okay. Though it would be best to let it warm up. So I'm just going to plug it back in, sit it down, and that drive is fine. There's no need to screw it down. And finally, we have to put this back onto this surface here. So finally we've got to put this back into the holder, put the holder onto this, and just put it here. I feel like the motor would be horribly hot. I'm just going to push it down a little. I was going to take this as an opportunity to clean out the fan, but the fan looks clean already, so I don't think that's entirely necessary at the moment. So I think we can now shutter this thing back up and ensure everything is connected and close the metal cover. This this part here, and now we can start screwing again. slam this on again. I'm going to try and take a look at, make it so that these things don't look as hideous. This gouge isn't it anyway. And what we're going to do, we're going to heat it up and then hopefully not look as bad as it, as it does. However, it'll be on the bottom anyway, so no one's going to be able to notice. I'm going to leave it like this for a few minutes just to cool down and then we're going to set it up and see if it recognizes it in airport utility. So guys, here's my base station where it normally sits on this shelf in the studio. And we'll come around over here to my MacBook. And as you can see, our little repair was a success. It's saying time capsule with four terabytes free. 
That's like four times the storage as I used to have. So that's absolutely wonderful. Now we're going to see if this thing can complete the repair, I mean the backup, of this MacBook Pro without overheating. Now just a quick note, at first it will say internal disk needs repair or something to that effect because the disk is not formatted, but if you go into airport utility and you click erase disk and you can use quick erase which is fine because there's nothing on that drive anyway, um, it will turn green and that's perfectly fine. So yeah. Now this drive is a little bit noisy. I can hear it from here compared to when compared to my 5400 RPM drive, but I think it's alright. No problem. So I'm going to try backing up my 15 inch Retina MacBook Pro and we'll see you soon. Alright guys, so the backup finished smoothly. So this is the time capsule. Now yes, you can hear it running a little bit louder now. Although there's too much background noise for you to be able to hear. So, and yes, the time the backup did complete successfully. It had roughly a hundred gigabytes um, of files. Okay then. So thank you guys for watching. Feel free to leave a comment if you have one.